الرحيم آه انا شاكر جدا كريم الدعوه دكتور عاطف بيه ودكتور اسامه بيه وشكرا كثير للمشاركه في هذه الويبينارز آه ربنا يتقبلها منكم ويجعلها في حسناتنا وحسناتكم آه something very positive للمجتمع وانا متاكد انه السيريز دي ومثيلاتها ما هي ما فيش مثيلاتها يعني بالحجم والضخامه والقوه دي لكن will have a huge impact on the practice of orthopedics in Egypt and in the region. I can see from the list of attendees we have a lot of of attendees from neighboring countries. Uh, very dear colleagues from uh, from uh, the Middle East and uh, uh, quite a few uh, colleagues from Africa. Anyway, uh, I'm very thankful for your invitation. وحتوكل على الله وأبدأ المحاضرة علشان ما نضيعش وقت ال. أي بي. معلش هو الفيس في مشكلة لسه ما المحاضرة ما تزعتش على الفيس. اوكي فبس لغايه ما يعني يظبطوها اسمح لي اسال قوي اسال حضرتك سؤال قوي انت ليه اخترت الموضوع دوت رغم ان يعني مش مطروق انا في سعيد طبعا بالاختيار بس اوضح للناس ليه حضرتك اخترت الموضوع ده والناس تشتغل على فكره طيب انا اخترت الموضوع ده لسببين السبب الاول انه A lot of patients بيوصلوا لي misdiagnosed و uh, missed in, in, uh, in management. Uh, تاني حاجة هو موضوع جديد ومش و... جديد أوي يعني احنا بنثبت السكابيولا من التسعينات. Uh, لكن موضوع مش مطروق والناس ما عندهاش تخيل how to think of a fractured scapula. Uh, I hope إنه نقدر إن احنا في المحاضره دي نوصل لكل الساده الزملاء a pattern of thinking a system of thinking of how to recognize and how to manage a fracture of the scapula اتوكل على الله دكتور اسامه دكتور اسامه اتوكل على الله ابتدي لا اه خلاص تمام اتفضل في شغل اوكي Okay, sorry about this. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين ونحن نتوكل. Today we're going to discuss scapular fractures and how to think of those and uh, do some rationalization of these injuries. Um, this is my name. 35 years old male who had a motor car accident. What do you think? This is his plain x ray, and this is his CT scan. You could see a fracture going there. Oh, I can't see my pointer. Pointer does not have You could see a fracture here, fracture there. And in the CT scan, you could see that's going all through the body of the scapula. So, what do you think? How should he be managed? Cooperatively or conservatively? I hope by the end of this lecture, you will be able to take a decision, my next door neighbor, uh, to evaluate fractures of the scapula, classify them, and identify the indications for surgical management, the operative approaches to that, and know about the outcome of these fractures. They are, they are rare fractures. As Professor Osama and Professor Atif uh, uh, al was saying, they are not common. They are less than 1% of all broken bones, and they present 3 to 5% of shoulder girdle injuries. And we're going to find out that they are very commonly associated with other shoulder girdle injuries, so they're more commonly missed than diagnosed. But why are they rare? Well, it's a thin bone and has a lot of elasticity in most of its part, 
and it is frequently mobile on the thoracic cage, so it is difficult for it to be to suffer a, uh, enough forces to break it. High energy trauma is the most common. is has to be high energy trauma. Low energy trauma does not break your scapula. Ninety of these patients, ninety percent of these patients have associated injuries elsewhere. Okay, يعني عشرة في المية فقط من هذه المرضى have an isolated injury of the shoulder. Only ten percent. While 90% have associated injuries, and I can tell you that isolated fractures of the scapula is only 4% of the 90, uh, of the 10%. Four out of 10, I mean. Okay. How is it injury? Direct blow. In our region, it is very common for bullet injuries. This is the most common fracture scapula I see bullet injuries, and those are easily picked up. But however, uh, indirect trauma can happen from fallen outstretched hand and the humeral head acts as a hammer and it fractures the glenoid and might fracture it or might cause a fracture dislocation. While direct blows, uh, are, as you said, high energy traumas and have a lot of association with uh, other injuries, averaging 90% in this case. So what type of, fract of, of fractures are associated with these injuries? Most commonly rib and skull fractures. 44% have rib fractures, 24 the skull fractures, and about 20 also, or 16, have spine injuries. So, but every other bone can be associated with a fracture Scapula, that's because it's a high energy trauma. Okay. And this is associated with a high number of associated injuries. 33% have head trauma, and 21% have 17% uh, 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 have lung injuries, whether it's a hemoneumothorax or a pulmonary contusion. Therefore, diagnosis depends on infection. Assessment of the cervical spine, the, th the thorax, neurological examination, vascular examination, and screening for associated injuries, which are extremely common. What's the X-ray views for the shoulder? Well, it is an a, a true AP and a lateral scapular view, which is known as the Y view. These are the standard views for the scapula. In a traumatic setting, it is extremely difficult to do an auxiliary view because of the pain, although in a later stage it can be done. CT scans are mandatory to classify and assess the number of fracture lines and their, their existence and their act and where do they exit the bone. So CT scans are mandatory and a chest X-ray is crucial. You have to make sure you don't have, you have an empty uh, costal diaphragmatic angle and you don't have a big uh, uh, lung uh, contusion. Treatment traditionally was, is, and will continue to be non-operatively, except in open fractures, with acceptable results. Over 90% of scapular fractures are none or minimally displaced and do well with, with conservative treatment. And even if the CT scan looks bad, the, uh, most of these patients do extremely well within six weeks of sling. However, more and more studies documented residual symptoms as well as advantages of operative treatment in these injuries. Um, as early as 1992, in a paper by Nordvist, um, they reported that 42% of their 48 patients with malunited uh, uh, fractures of the scapula presented with pain, functional deficit, limitations of range of motion, and some shoulder imbalance. We know that malunited fractures of the scapula um, 
alters the shoulder girdle function, and this uh, results in malalignment, arthrosis, uh, dysfunction, some form of impingement type of pain, and scapulothoracic dyskinesia. Um, so, more recently, operative treatment and uh, is becoming more and more described safe and effective. The AO Foundation has really um, initiated um, with the uh, American uh, Orthopedic Trauma Association uh, uh, a focus group to come out with a new scapular classification, which was published in uh, 2013, uh, uh, included my dear friends, Martin Yeager and Simon Lambert uh, and Renato Babas. And um, this classification is very important to cons when you're considering fractures of the scapula. They divide it comprehensively and reliably uh, the, the scapula into three parts and an associated part. It is known as the FBPS, where F stands for the fossa, which is the glenoid, and the body for B, the processes, which is the chromium and the, the, the coracoid, and uh, S is the lateral scapular suspension system. Um, um, أنا ليه رجاء لو لو ينفع حد من السادة الحضور عنده سكابيولا في البيت أو في المستشفى وهو بيسمع المحاضرة دي لو هو ماسك السكابيولا في إيده هتفرق معاه جدا في تخيل اللي بيحصل معانا ده. If you have a scapula, try to grab it and and hold it while we're discussing. Um, so the S stands for the lateral scapular suspension system which is how the, the scapula transmits forces to the, uh, the clavicle. And then it has two systems, the basic system and advanced level system, which allows for uh, better documentation, but we usually use the basic system for classification. Let's start with the fossa. The fossa may be F, zero in which it is an extra articular fragment it's not involving the glenoid uh, fossa itself but the articular segment is detached from the body it's not a common fracture while simple fractures known as f1 um, they are uh, simple they there's only one fracture line crossing the glenoid fossa while multifragmentary fractures it involves the, the, uh, uh, the glenoid fossa with three or more articular uh, fractures. That means two fracture lines are coming out of the glenoid fossa. While the body might be a simple fracture of the body with two exits, we, we always think how many exits come out. Two or less exits are simple fractures of the body, while three exits or more would be considered to be uh, um, a complex fracture of the, of the body. And this can be associated with the glenoid fracture, and one of the exits comes through that, or can be isolated as in extra-articular ones. Processes. The coracoid is considered to be P5, while the, the, the chromium is uh, P0, I'm sorry, while the chromium is P1, and uh, P2 is when the chromium and the coracoid are both fractured. Um, what about the lateral scapular suspension system, which is an S? S0, there's no involvement of the system. S1 is when uh, there's an incomplete failure. That means there's failure of one, one break in the suspensory system. And we know if there's one break, the suspensory system is still functioning. 
This can happen with a fracture of the clavicle, lateral to the coracoclavicular uh, ligament, incomplete separation of the AC ligament, or a fracture of the base of, uh, of the coracoid, and or it can be complete in which uh, the suspension system is disrupted in more than one point. Um, I'll come back to this again. The main indications of surgical treatment is when you expect that the malunion will affect the shoulder function. Three main parts. I'll start with the with the B. The B. Uh, the central one is the angulation. If there's too much angulation in in the the vertical plane of the scapula, most probably this will not be able to glide well, and will this uh, uh, and this will affect how the rotator is function and thus dysfunction of the whole shoulder. However, if the glenoid fossa is, if the fossa is broken and the glenopolar angle, which is the angle between the articular surface and uh, almost the lateral border, it's from the highest point to the inferior point, uh, the highest point of the glenoid to the inferior point is also very important for the functionality. And the medial translation of the glenoid is, as well is, um, uh, is one of the very important points of, uh, that affects the function. Uh, so these are the three main criteria. We'll go into details across that, that you have to keep a, a lie, an eye on, is the angulation of the body of the scapula, the glenoporal angle, and the medial displacement or translation of the uh, glenoid. Okay. You could see that most commonly fractures of the scapula that are managed surgically are those with a glenoid fossa fracture, those with a glenoid neck fractures, and they represent almost 75%. And those with an ipsilateral fracture clavicle, there's some tendency to also to fix those as well. What about the floating shoulder idea? Well, if you have an ipsilateral fracture of the clavicle and, uh, sorry, a fracture of the glen of the fossa uh, of the glenoid neck, and you have a fracture of the clavicle medial to the coracoclavicular uh, to the coracoclavicular ligaments, then there is complete disruption of the suspensory system. This is a floating shoulder. While if you have um, a fracture of the glenoid neck, but at the same end, and you have either a, a rupture of your uh, coracoclavicular and coracoacromial ligaments, or you have an AC joint disruption, or you have a lateral fracture of the clavicle, or you have a fracture of the acromion, any of those would result also in a floating shoulder. Okay, there is some. Um, cons there is an idea that if you have a, uh, a floating shoulder, it is enough to be to fix the scapula, and this would reduce and fix and and repair your your scapular deformity. But uh, is this true? is fixing this clavicular fracture going to put that glenoid back in its place? Most of the time, it's not. Well, even if you fix the clavicle anatomically, this will not reduce your body significantly enough to reduce if it's displaced significantly. If it's undisplaced, then there's no place for, 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 uh, for considering fixing it here. But in this patient, I would definitely take him back to theater in a lateral decubitus and I'll do a posterior approach and I'll fix his uh, glenoid neck. What about intraarticular fractures of the glenoid? They are 10% of, uh, of the fracture of the scapula. 
they are usually meaning displaced and usually they are treated conservatively, while only 10% are displaced and need surgery. I mean, 10% فقط أو من ال من كسور اللوح intraarticular. وال 10% دول 90% منهم مش displaced. فبالتالي 10% منهم بس اللي displaced. فاحنا بنتكلم في واحد في المية من scapular fractures اللي هيحتاجوا يبقوا fixed. One only one percent اللي هم displaced articular fractures that need fixation. فده أول indication of fixation. Uh, sometimes we return back to the old Eidberg classification to identify what type is displaced, but the definite indications would be a joint step off of more than two to five millimeters, depending on other criteria, and the presence of shoulder instability. And if I have, uh, uh, if I have an Eidberg five with inferior subluxation of the humerus, I have to fix that or Eidberg, uh, or Eidberg two. If I have an huge dislocation of the shoulder and I have an Eidberg one, then I need to fix that as well. What about the glenoid neck? As we said, the glenoid neck is usually, we miss that. There are two things to consider in the glenoid neck is the angle of rotation of the glenoid, which is known as the glenopolar angle. And the other one is the medialization or the translation of the glenoid. Okay, so how can that affect us? You know, the problem of medialization or uh, or disruption of the anatomical relation between the glenoid and the scapula and the proximal humerus is that the, there is dysfunction of all rotators, and we know that muscle that the, the rotator cuff is is extremely important to stabilize and ensure that the shoulder moves well or moves even moves so medialization or telescoping or shortening is measured from the most the outermost point of the lateral court of the lateral uh, border of the scapula and the innermost point of the lateral border uh, of the glenoid okay the literature said that uh, we more than 20 millimeters is a definitive indication for surgery of uh, uh, lateral uh, um, border offset. More than 20 meters is a definitive indication, but we say 10 to 20 because if there's also some linopolar angle affection, then we will have a tendency to fix at 10 millimeters. Um, But the cutoff point is usually 20 millimeters. Uh, what about the glenopolar angle? It's lie between the most cranial point of the glenoid and the tip of the scapula. It's almost parallel to the lateral border of the scapula. And uh, the articular surface, you can measure that on a proper, uh, a true and sincere view of the shoulder. And we know in many published work um, over the last maybe 35 years that there's poor outcome if this angle is less than 20 degrees. So we aim to restore the glenopolar angle to more than 20 degrees. This is the case we showed earlier, which has an 18 degrees and we fixed it. It became 32 degrees. Okay. What of glenoid extra articular angulation? We know that more than 30 degrees of angulation of the body of the scapula would probably result in poor gliding of uh, the, 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 the scapula over the thoracic wall, and as well as dysfunction of the infraspinatus, the teres minor, as well as the subscapularis. So these are what our indications of surgical management, intraarticular displacement, more than two to five millimeters, especially if there's subluxation uh, or if there's subluxation, um, angulation of the body, more than 30 degrees, media translation, 10 to 20 degrees, and a glenopolar angle, less than 20 degrees. So how do we manage that surgically? Surgical approaches are either anterior, 
or posterior. Anterior are not commonly used except in anterior rim fractures, coronoid or acromial fractures, while most of the glenoid neck and, and body fractures are managed to a posterior approach. And we can see here that the posterior approach is used in about 80% of those of, glen of scapular fractures. What are our posterior approaches. Classically, we always use the Judea approach. The Judea approach is an extensive approach that really gives you access to the whole body of the scapula. However, it is, it is a big, a lot of blood loss, extensive dissection, and people are now moving into the Brodsky approach. Brodsky is a, is a longitudinal approach uh, that gives access to almost the same view you can get from a classical Jude. The posterior approach is used for fracture of the glenoid neck and body. It, uh, the Jude it uses only one internervous plane between the infraspinatus, which is supplied by the subscapularis, the infraspinatus there, and uh, suprascapular nerve, I'm sorry, and the teres minor, which is supplied by the axillary nerve. Okay? And you can elevate this infraspinatus of the fossa to have full access to the fossa just hanging over the suprascapular nerve, although I would not recommend anybody in his dissection to see that much of the suprascapular nerve. Lateral decubitus, and this is the approach. Then we go supraosteal over the, lat over the chromium and uh, the lateral border of the scapula. It is not now accepted or, uh, or uh, needed or recommended to detach part of the deltoid like we did, like in this dissection. This is the acromia, the spine of the scapula and the trapezius is there. And this is deltoid of the trapezius. This gives you the infraspinatus. This is the teres minor. And this is the dismus dorsi covering the teres major there. And this is the plane we go into. It is not easy to pick up the plane between the teres minor, uh, the teres minor and the infraspinatus. However, the direction of fibers and uh, the, uh, is different. The infraspinatus is looking more vertically upwards, while the teres minor is more uh, inferior, looks more inferiorly. Um, the fibers of the teres minor are coarser, and in a, in a, in, in a non-cadaveric setting, in a clinical setting, I can tell you, you could also use nerve stimulation uh, through either a bipolar or, um, uh, or a, a true nerve stimulator from an histologist, and you can stimulate the infraspinatus and it will contract independent of the tear spinal and it will lead you into the plane between those two muscles. Um, once you, you've done that, you develop the pain, and you could see all through the neck, the glenoid, and the lateral border of the scapula. And um, this is an internervous plane, as this is supplied by the suprascapular nerve, uh, the infraspinatus, and the teres minor is through the axillary nerve. And um, if you need, if you need, you can also extend the elevation of the whole fossa up to the up to the medial border of the scapula and you've got excellent access to the posterior aspect of the spine of the spine of the scapula the body of the scapula the glenoid neck and the glenoid fossa itself the posterior and inferior part and uh, you could also do a capsulotomy and look into articulary although this is usually, is usually very limited. What are the Brodsky approach? The Brodsky approach is a vertical incision of the lateral aspect of the scapula, and you do muscle dissection. It utilizes three windows, uh, the, the most important of which is still the same window between the teres minor and the, tier, and the infraspinatus. You could also open between the teres major and the teres mi major and the teres minor, and you can uh, you can slightly elevate off uh, uh, the medial 
the medial border of the scapula, some of the infraspinatus as well. After you've exposed, where do you put your pl your plates? The 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 in general, the scapula is a thin bone, and it's not homogeneous in thickness. So, where can you put screws? Uh, the glenoid neck is uh, the most common. It's thick. You usually put quite decent screws. I always try to put, uh, especially in inferior plates, I'd like to put uh, plates from inferior to upwards. And these are usually like 40 to 50 millimeter screws, usually less than 50, 48, 46. Depends on how big a guy is. And this is a transillumination. You put just some light. You could see that the, the body is very thin, but you have a good, thick, sturdy acromion, uh, acromion process, uh, uh, spine of the scapula, I mean, uh, and acromion. And you can put their plates. The lateral border is very thick as well. The medial border is not as thick, but it can be used as well for fixation. Remember my neighbor? What do you think now? Is he indicated for surgery? Well, he's got a very shallow glenoporal angle. He's got medialization of about 10 millimeters. Okay. So he is indicated for surgery because of the, the shallowness and because of the, uh, the added medialization. You went in. You could do it in lateral decubitus or in a supine, uh, a prone decubitus, a standard lateral J, detaching the infraspinatus, and the infraspinatus all is, um, is elevated there. It's in the upper part of the wound, and you put two plates contours on the lateral border and the medial border going into the spine of the scapula. Okay, what about the results? Most patients do quite well in a systematic review study uh, um, reported an 83.8%, closing to 84%, good and excellent results for open reduction to fixations of the flexures of the scapula. Complications were not many, but infection was 4%. Prominent and symptomatic hardware that you needed removal was like 7%, and uh, uh, some joint stiffness, uh, residual pain, and weakness, like in 5% of patients. So my take-home message to you guys that you have to be aware of the high instance of associated injuries. You have to exclude those. You have to make sure that um you have to make sure that um, that your patient does not have other associated injuries especially the fatal ones chest abdomen rupture spleen um, uh, cervical injuries head trauma conservative uh, treatment is still the mainstay of management and will continue to be while operative results can give excellent uh, results and low complication rate in indicated, indicated in articular step off of two to five millimeters or associated with uh, shoulder instability, medial displacement, 10 to 20 millimeters, a green pore angle of less than 20 uh, millimeters, and a floating shoulder. Stabilization with plates and screws through a posterior approach is the most commonly accepted method of production for internal uh, fixation. Thank you very much for your att for attention, and I would love to answer any questions should they arise. Shukran, Dr. Ashraf. Hadra, yani, yani, hadra from this nawaiya, not for her, but for Ashraf Muharram. God bless you, sir. Yani, in fact, we were not expecting to hear the hadra. بنشكر حضرتك طبعا على المجهود المبذول فيها وطبعا الاسئله مع الدكتور عاطف على الزوم والفيسبوك معايا لو حابين تسالوا حاجه للدكتور اشرف يا جماعه او طلباتكم للمحاضرات القادمه بالنسبه للدكتور اشرف
تقدر تراعي طبعا بنشكر الدكتور اشرف وعمره ما خيب ظننا ابدا محاضره تو ذا بوينت ما يعني كونسايز صحيح ولكن فيها كل ما هو يفيدنا انا كان مهم جدا فعلا يا دكتور اشرف يا ريتنا حتى كنا احنا نبهنا قبل المحاضره بشويه ان فعلا لو السكابولا كابون في ايد معظمنا كانت الفايده هتتعظم فعلا يعني عشان تخيل عظمه مثل هذه العظمه كان لازم كثيرين مننا فعلا يمسكوا السكابولا ويتابعوا حضرتك لكن بصراحه محاضره قيمه جدا 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 كعادتك يا دكتور اشرف ربنا يخليك لينا ويجازيك خير عن كل جهدك اللي بتبذله تقريبا ابتدى تظهر بعض الاسئله عند حضرتك في كيو اند اي في اسئله ايوه يا فندم دكتور خالد حسين از اي اندرستود سي تي سكان از مانداتوري تو ميك سي تي سكان ايفالويشن تو ذا ديسبيسمنت اوف فراكشر شكرا دكتور خالد بي على على السؤال دكتور خالد از دير كوليك فروم لبنان لو انا فاهم صح يس سي تي سكان اند ثري دايمنشنال سي تي سكان is very important to assess the angle because it's difficult to, to, to rotate a proper lateral scapular view so that you'll be able to see it. So body angulation will, will the displacement in medialization is usually measured, 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 measured on a CT scan, especially a 3D CT scan. Uh, Dr. Mohamed Kamel is how to detach, to repair detached infraspinatus post-operatively, thus just suturing or. Dr. Mohamed, we usually don't suture it back. We just usually leave it to, to, to drop in place. Um, um, uh, uh, أيام ما كان ما كنت لسه يعني in training process وكنت شو أقول لا على فكرة كل ما الواحد بيكبر في السن كل ما هو بيبقى عنده اللاجري انه يختار هو بيعمل ايه لكن كل ما هو صغير كل ما هو لابس كل حاجه فما كنت بشتغل حوض كنا كتير قوي ما بن اف وي ديتاتش ذا جلوتيوس ماكسيموس مثلا كنت شغلت مع استاذنا الدكتور مار حلاوه كان بيتاتش جلوتيوس ماكسيموس وكان ساعات يخليني افتح وراه حاله معموله من كذا سنه الاقي الجوتس ماكسيموس هاز ري اتاتش تاني فالانفاسبيتس وي ليف ات تو ري اتاتش باك انتو بليس دكتور احمد سليمان بيسال اف يو هاف سي تي ايمج تو ديتكت انترا تيكر فراكشرز اه لازم 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 الاسسمنت بتاع الـ بتاع السكابولا اتس نوت اكيوريت انف تو تو دو ات ثرو ان اكس راي ات كان بي مسليدنج از يو سيد Uh, having said that, لازم أقول لكم إنه يعني الرعيل الأول من أساتذتنا يعني أنا شرفت أنا حضرت ممكن كذا كنا بنسميها جراند جراند راوند حضرها الدكتور أحمس بيه الحمامسي وده يعتبر كرونولوجيكلي ثالث أستاذ عظم في في مصر ده اللي شفناه يعني كان بيجي وهو عنده فوق ال 85 سنه هيز اناليسيز اوف بلين اكس راي مختلفه تماما عن ذا موست اكسبيرينس في الجيل ده لانه كان ما عندوش سلاح غيره كان لازم يطلع بيبقى اميزد اوف وات هي كان ريد فروم ادجست بلين اكس راي هي ديد هي نيفر لوكت ات ذا سي تي سكان هي جاست لوكت ات بلين اكس راي Dr. Khalid Hussain B.S.L. Is the posterior approach, there is a risk of nerve injury? Do you uh, know any uh, today about it or what is your experience? El nerve injuries for the first time, you have three, four nerves at risk. Um, I'm going to start sharing the screen or the screen that is shared. Oh, this is shared. Yes. Hey. Uh, I'm طيب خليني خليني ااا طب بقى لا انا عايز هجيب حاجه عايز اجيب حاجه عايز اجيب حاجه عشان اجاوب آه. على الدكتور خالد على الدكتور خالد يس لا ميبي مش دي احسن واحده 
اوكي هي يمكن اوكي خلينا انا طبعا ديفينتلي اف يو اليفيت يور انفستمنتس تو ماتش اند اف يو اليفيت لا يو نيفر اليفيت يور يور اليفيت يور انفستمنتس سوبيريورلي اند لاترالي اف يو بوش ات انفيريورلي اور ميديالي يو ويل كات ذا سوبر سكابولار نيرف از ذس كومن تو انجر يس is it common to be injured uh, in a neuropraxia and to recover الاجابه نعم okay then you have two in two nerves that can be injured very easily axillary nerve في quadrangular space وتحته هنا في ال في triangular space ماشي مع ده ده مين ده ده profunda brachial artery ده profunda brachial artery uh, خارج من ال من ال من ال Sometimes with a common stem with the circumflex, but in front of the brachial artery, it goes with the radial nerve, the triangular space. Where uh, the triangular space is here, the triangular space is here, it has the circumscapular vessels, uh, and it has ascending branch, and before you lift the infraspinatus, you have to cauterize that. How do I explain this to you? I'll explain it Okay, okay. Um, uh, خليني أقولها أنا بيدي. لو دول لو دي الانفرا دي التيرس ماينر ودي التيرس ميجر وعليها لفة في التي اللي تسمس دورساي. Okay. وصباعي ده صباعي ده الهومرس. Okay. So by the long head of of uh, the triceps. كده عندي لو أنتوا شايفين quadrangular space ما بين صابعي و triangular space ناحية إيدي اليمين و triangular space ناحية إيدي الشمال. The quadrangular space ده فيه axillary nerve. The triangular space ده التحتاني ده فيه radial nerve. و triangular space ده فيه circumflex scapular vessels. فلاقي فيه نيرف انجريز and you have to be very very aware of that. I hope this was useful. دكتور أحمد إسماعيل بيسأل open fractures of the scaphoid and treatment of coracoid fractures. of the scapula. open fractures of the scapula زي أي open fracture the bride لو كانت usually the bullets بتبقى stable fractures لأنها العظمة عبارة عن دايرة طبق ما بتكسرهاش قوي بس if it uh, you, 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 it follows the principles of management of uh, open fractures however putting metalware في في around the scapula for wood uh, مش عايز أقول minor infection بس potential infection is a risk we usually take like a hand because the vascularity is so high well, and it's not a tubular bone It's not a tubular bone. It's a flat bone. The flat bones will we we kind of covered by a lot of muscles. We have a and then a potential to handle debridement and fixation initially. Hatta lo fi potential of of contamination accepted. Mish ba mish warm mish warm motor or mish neglected or mish macerated or mish gastillo ma gastillo ma afshu tabe hena ala. The treatment of fracture coracoid. The coracoid fractures. أنا أعتقد إن الجيل ده كله أقوى مننا في الكوراكويد فراكتشرز عشان انتشار الترجي والكلام ده. كوراكويد فراكتشرز زي ما قلنا في السلايد بتاع الدلتو بيكتورال. The only indication for opening an, an anterior approach is an anterior rim fracture, a coracoid fracture, or an acromion fracture. لأن الأكروميان فراكتشر دي لها أربعة خمسة أبروتشز تانيين. أه لكن الكوراكويد بيتفتح عليها anteriorly. Like you're doing a letter J, and you see the base, and you put it, you put a cannulated screw, you put a wire, and you make sure you're, you're in, and you put a cannulated compression screw. Usually, and I like to put, I try to put two or four milli, but I don't like to put one big one. That's for this. My brother, Tour Mohammed Kamal, is asking about rehabilitation steps. Rehabilitation steps basically uh, um, an, an arm sling, pendular exercises, but as we're in Talata, uh, fixation 
بتاع بودي فراكشر غير جلونويد فراكشر غير آآ آآ لما يكون في انترو ارتيكولار فراكشر اللي يوجولي نشيت ايرلي موبيلايزيشن لسبب غريب جدا ان انا اف اي ديفلوب ا شولدر ستيفنس ذس از مور ستريس اون ماي امبلانت هحاول اقول النظريه دي بطريقه اوضح شويه وانت خارج من اوضه العمليات وانت بتقفل الجلد ده اقوى وقت للفيكسيشن بتاعك اوكي اقوى وقت للفيكسيشن بتاعك وذا ليست ستيفنس موجود فلما تحرك ايرلي وذ ليس ستيفنس اند سترونجر فيكسيشن يور ليس لايبل تو فيل هاويفر اف يو ايموبلايز فور ا لونج تايم يو وذ تايم وي نو ذا كواليتي اوف فيكسيشن بتقل وما بنلحقش في ست اسابيع في, في في لا في ست اسابيع هنا تبقى تلحق يبقى عندك كالس او عندك يعني بون يونيون بس بس ان لونج بونز ما تلحقش ف ف ف يموبلايز يموبلايز فور شهر يو اونلي جين ستيفنس اند ويكنس اوف ذا امبلانت الحاجه الوحيده اللي هاف تو بي فيري 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 كاشس اباوت هو لما يكون في سبلكسيشن اوف يور شولدر يعني انت دخلت تثبت جلينويد لان لان الشولدر كان انفيريور سبلكست او انتيريور ديسلوكيتد او انتيريور سبلكست او اي حاجه ده الوقت الوحيد اللي اللي تبقى فيري كاشس اوت امبلايزيشن سام تايمز تحط ابداكشن بيلو لو انت مش عايزه ينبنج انفيريورلي اكتر من اللازم سوري <تصفيق> في بوستيريلي اكتر لازم كنت تحط اكسترا روتيشن بيلو اذا كنت انت مش عايزه ينبنش بوستيريلي تعمل ميك شور انه يحط ايده على صدره اذا كنت عايزه ينبنش انتيريلي اند سو اون لكن ايرلي موبيلايزيشن از ذا نيم اوف ذا جيم هاو تو ديتكت بري اوبريتيف نيرف انجري سوبر سكابيولار اند اكسلري سؤال حلو قوي من الدكتور احمد فلوهدي الاكسلري Uh, is extremely difficult بس المفروض ان انت تعمل تيستنج عن طريق uh, السكن على السارجنتس باتش و, و, وتحط ايدك على الديلتويد وتحس تحاول تبلبيت انيشيشن اوف موفمنت مش عايز تحرك كتف تقول له بس حاول تشد عضله الكتف عشان تشد عضله الابداكشن يو كود بلبيت ا كونتراكشن السوبر سكابيولار نيرف از اولموست امبوسيبل تو بيك اب كلينيكلي or uh, preoperatively لكن intraoperatively في كذا طريقه انك تقدر تشوف اذا كانت لا لو كنت داخل ليك لو داخل ايرلي برضو it is not possible to شوف ان هو affected ولا لا. Uh, حتى الاي ام جي لو كونكشن ستاديز مش هيفيدوك الا بعد ثلاث اسابيع. Can we use a combined approach simultaneously or to be staged uh, 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 for combined anterior and posterior fracture or PNF؟ uh, okay. Um, بصراحة هي تتعمل بس it's very difficult اوكي okay? بتحتاج تحط العيان في وضع اسمه floppy lateral ما هوش lateral هو lateral بس بس متدلع بس floppy تقدر تزق منه شوية prone وتزقه شوية تبقى جايب مش بيت شير او يعني بيت شير لربع تمام uh, and it's not easy it's not nice usually always يا محمد if you're going to to choose a staged reduction we all, we almost always start with your clavicle with the anterior approach uh, unless two things the clavicle is very comminuted فبالتالي it will be difficult to guide the length من قدام or you have uh, an intraarticular fracture of your glenoid that involves the coracoid يعني fracture واخد الجلينويد بالابر بارت اوف الجلينويد مع الكوراكويد ده لازم يتعمل ده, ده لازم يتثبت الاول الاول من مع قبل ما نثبت بقيه السكابل احنا كده خلصنا الاسئله اللي في الكويشنز انسر هنا